Hello, I am Dong Gang. I am a doctoral student at the Computational Robotics Lab in ETH Zurich. Today, I am going to introduce our method for reproducing animal gates on quadrupedal robots using motion matching and model-based control. Today's quadrupedal robots can perform highly dynamic and agile motions such as running, jumping, backflips, side flips, and even dancing. Nevertheless, their movements are arguably stiff and lack the simple subtle nuances that can easily be observed in animals. As you can see in this video, during typical locomotion tasks, most commercial quadrupedal robots today tend to follow unnaturally symmetric and regular movement patterns. Such motion features can make robots appear stereotypically lifeless and mechanical. And consequently, we humans do not feel comfortable in the presence of the robots. Meanwhile, people like dogs. We perceive dogs as friendly and relatable. Quadrupedal robots are created with inspiration from their natural counterparts. Their morphology resembles dogs one. However, legged robots do not move like dogs. Robots merely persist pre-designed repetitive motion patterns. Due to such a disparity, people still perceive these robots as artificial machines. The ultimate goal of this work is to make robots seem more relatable through their behavior. Consequently, we seek to adjust the motions of robots. More specifically, we explore the challenge of generating animal-like walking motions of quadrupedal robots. By doing so, we believe that we can make robots to appear to be living beings. So, what is the secret of dog's movement? We observed a dog's walking motions and identified their main characteristics. Uh, this video clip here is a recording of motion capture data of a dog. And as you can see, the dog adapts its walking patterns based on its desired speed. Additionally, its footsteps are non-periodic and highly skewed. Finally, its body tends to shift and or twist in sync with the footsteps slightly. We want to reproduce the non-periodic nature of dog's walking motions, specifically non-periodic footsteps and the variation in body trajectory that makes their motions seem more organic. Moreover, we want to imitate the behavior of natural transitions between different gait patterns. In order to achieve this, we use motion capture data of a dog. This approach has two main advantages. First, it preserves the patterns of animal movements such as body offset and the timing of footsteps. Second, it encourages natural transitions between different behaviors without time-consuming and restrictive manual generation of transition animations. And we propose a control pipeline that combines character animation techniques with a state-of-the-art model-based motion controller architecture. Let me present the details of our model-based motion controller first. Our motion controller reproduces a target character motion clip on a robot. It extracts a gate plan from a target motion and generates motor torque commands. The first stage of the motion controller is reference trajectory generation. This stage takes a gate plan as an input and generates reference trajectories for the robot's base and feet. But what is the gate plan? I record that we aim to reproduce non-periodic football patterns and the variations in body trajectory. Thus, we extract a footfall sequence and body height and velocity profiles from a target dog motion and use this semantic information as a gate plan. This approach allows us to transfer the dog motions to a robot with a different morphology and actuation power. 
We scale the speed and the height profile according to dimensions of the robot. Here, we consider this scaling factor as a tuning parameter as we found it to be intuitive and easy to find. And from a scaled body profile and an extracted footfall sequence, we generate reference trajectories by a standard like the locomotion trajectory planning strategy. And then a combination of a model predictive controller and the whole body controller tracks the reference trajectories robustly. As a target gate plan extracted from motion capture data may involve highly skewed irregular footsteps and frequent non-contact phases, it can lead to poor performance in tracking the base trajectory and cause the robot to lose its balance and fall over. We therefore need a control stage that matches the input reference trajectories as closely as possible while ensuring that they remain feasible for the robot to track. To achieve this, we apply a combination of MPC and WBC in a similar manner as proposed by Kim et al. The MPC takes into account the dynamic effect aroused by movement and predicts the robot's behavior over a long time horizon. It leads to a more robust control execution that can handle underactuated configuration as well. Our MPC uses a simple lump mass model that represents a robot as a 60 degree of freedom single body object. We discretize and linearize the vacation of the motion and we forward simulate multiple time steps with this simplified model. Then we find optimal ground reaction forces as well as body trajectory predictions that minimizes trajectory error by solving a convex quadratic programming. The problem is to minimize the sum of trajectory error over multiple time steps subject to the linearized dynamics and input and state constraints. As a final step, we track this ground reaction force target and the wrong time horizon optimal trajectory while taking into account whole body dynamics. We use a whole body control method. It finds joint torque commands that allow robot to follow trajectory prediction from MPC by solving another convex quadratic program. In summary, uh, we use a mo motion controller that consists of three stages. From a gate plan extracted from a motion clip, we generate kinematic reference trajectory and convert it to dynamics-aware trajectories with the MPC. And finally, we compute the joint torque to follow the MPC trajectories. This control stack can successfully transfer a target dog motion to a quadruped robot. As you can see in these video clips, the robot motion replicates small body movements and non-periodic footsteps of no animal motion. The motion controller can generate the motion given a gate plan extracted from a motion clip, but we want to let a robot follow a user's target speed command. For this purpose, we apply a data-driven computer animation tool that generates a target motion based on a high-level command, such as a desired moving speed and the turning rate. More specifically, we use a character animation method called motion matching. This method generates motion sequences that is responsive to a user's command. The idea of motion matching is simple. Given the current state of some predefined motion features and the user's target input, we retrieve the best sequence to play from the huge mocap dataset. And we blend the retrieved motion into currently played motion sequences. And from there, we extract footfall sequence by special holding feet velocity and feet height of the character. And also, we extract the body velocity and height profile. As already mentioned, uh, this cementing information is used as a gate plan. So let's see how well motion matching works. In this video, you can see our quadruped character follows uh, the user's command responsibly. 
you can also notice that the footfall sequence extracted from the motion sequence is also reasonable. And altogether, we can let a robot follow user's command and walk in an animal-like style. We can apply our pipeline to various robotic platforms. The, the only parameter that needs to be tuned for a specific mobile model is the scaling factor that is used to transfer the character motions from the data set to the robot. We evaluated the efficacy of our control pipeline with two scenarios. In the first scenario, constant forward speed command of 0.8 meter per second was given. And as I highlighted, the robot can replicate the small variations in body movements that we observe in animal motion. In the second scenario, a forward speed command was varied over a range between 0 to 0 0.9 meter per second. The plots here show that the robot is able to track the user command input. There are some mismatches and delays in comparison to the target command in velocity level, but overall, the target-based position resulting from the velocity command can still be tracked reasonably well. The footfall sequence of the robot is depicted in the last row. It is visible that the robot swiftly changes its gait based on the target base speed. In the range of 0 to 0 0.3 meter per second, the gait planner generates a slow walking gait that moves the robot's feet one by one. As the command speed increases to 0 0.3 to 0 0.6 meter per second, the gait is changed to a pace gait. And in the range of 0 0.6 to 0 0.9, the gait is changed to a trot gait. We can see that the footfall frequency, as well as the duration ratio of swing to stance phases, increase with higher speed commands. In the experiments, our method revealed two main limitations. First, since motion matching simply searches through the existing dataset, the resulting robot motions are limited by the richness of the motion capture dataset. This results in the mismatches and the delays in a robot's velocity comparison to the target commands as highlighted here. This problem can be addressed by collecting more data or applying more advanced data-driven methods that can generate motions even does not exist in motion database. Second, uh, we noticed that foot skate effects can occur during the motion matching phase. And this can result in infeasible footfall sequences that cannot be robustly handled by the locomotion controller. This is mainly due to the inertialization blending which can propagate the drift along the limbs. The graphics community has addressed this problem in the context of character animation. How these techniques can be adopted for our framework is part of our future investigation. Despite the limitations, our control pipeline enables select robots to perform animal-like walking motions. We observed that the robots are able to reproduce the key characteristics of animal-like movements such as subtle body movements, as well as non-periodic gates. We can apply our control pipeline for various robot models with different scales and actuation power with a very small effort. Moreover, we were able to replicate an animal behavior that involves the natural switches between different gates based on the desired moving speed. Now, uh, let's compare robot motions before applying our method and after applying our method. We believe animal-like robot motions that we generated here appear more natural and organic. In the near future, we are going to deploy our control pipeline or on robot hardware for testing and validation. Thank you very much for your attention.